Okay, so in this first part, I'm going to show you how to track our footage. Okay, so we've got this nice little simple bit of footage that we're going to track our 3D asset onto in the middle of this table. Um, so it's just a bit of a sequence of steps, really, this process. So all I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to add a sharpened node. Now the reason I'm adding the sharpened node in here is just to pick out extra detail in the table. Um, it's just a temporary node. So as you see, once I ramp this up, it just picks out and just enhances the finer details that Newt's going to be able to create points to track onto. Because basically Newt's going to create a point cloud of this table. Um, and we're going to tell it to do... Uh, like about a thousand points here, so it's going to track and um, create a bit of a point cloud of the table. At this point, I might change the project end. So if I just hit S on the keyboard when my mouse cursor is hovering over the node graph, I don't want to do all these frames, so I'm just going to cut it to about 50 to 224, I think, yeah. 50, you know, let's just do 50 to 200 just for the sake of the exercise and let's make this 25 frames per second and I'm going to change the format to HD no need to be doing any higher for this and we are good to go just want to make sure my read knows the same yes just HD there good. Okay, now it's time to add a camera tracker. So I'm just going to click on the sharper node, the la last node in the in my uh, script so far, and then I'm going to hit the tab key again. I'm going to search for camera. Let's get it right, camera tracker 3D. Let's create this little node here. I'll zoom in there so you can see. So we've got our little video sharpen camera tracker and we've made it our frame range here. So off to the camera tracker. Let's just run through this. So we're gonna go hit the frame range that we're, the frame range that we want to track. So by default it's looking at the whole thing. So it's it's looking at the the read node, the original. So it's doing one to two two four. So we can change this to global and global just goes off what we've made the timeline to, if that makes sense. And um, you can actually do a custom one if you just wanted to do part of the shot. And you can put any frame range you want in. So global's fine for this. Uh, moving down, um, this is actually just shot on an iPhone. And I don't know uh, what the focal length was or uh, the lens distortion on it. And I didn't do a lens distortion grid uh, just for this task. Um, in future videos I'll show you a bit more about lens distortion, lens distortion grids and things like that. Um, but we can get away without it for, just for this simple task. Um, film back preset, if you did it on a DSLR camera in particular or any of the like, popular uh, video cameras, you can actually put that in. So often I've used a Canon maybe 70D to film on. And you can put that in there. It just helps it with the tracking slightly. But I was just taking an iPhone 11, and I don't really know the details. But it doesn't really matter. Just for this simple little task. I'm going to move along here, just along the tabs. These aren't relevant just yet. Uh, until we get to the settings, we're on number of features. So number of features can stand for. Uh, the number of tracking points basically um, how many points in the point cloud so at the minute it's just by default 150 I like to do around about 800 to a thousand or something let's just do a thousand to make sure so it's gonna do a thousand points and it'll become more obvious in a minute when I hit track so I'll leave that for now I can have a look at the threshold but I can edit this after as well so I don't need to worry about that and the solving as well. 
So let's go back to the camera tracker tab and then let's hit track. And I will speed this up in a second. But you can see here, and we've got our progress bar. You can see it ticking away across the frames. Now it's going to go all the way to the end and then all the way back to the beginning. It almost does like a double track and you can see all the points that it's clinging on to here. It's basically creating this 3D point cloud. It's going to kind of, it's really clever calculations. And then you see it's going back. Depending on your computer system, this can take quite a bit of time or not. All right, well, that's done that. So if you scroll through here, you can see all these orange points all tracked. And you can see their little trails off them. If you zoom in on them. See their kind of motion tracking trail they go on. Like so. The next uh, part is to solve this, so I'm going to hit the solve button. Solving just decides which are the good ones and which are the bad, which are unusable. So it's going to say, tell us which are the best points it's tracked. And you can see here, I've got some red, green, and there's normally a few orange in there as well. A bit of a traffic light system for the good and bad ones. So we can filter these out now. Go to Auto Tracks. And we've got a solve error of 0.91. Anything below one is pretty good, but... Ideally, I want that a bit lower. So what we can do is just adjust these settings down here. So the max error and the max track error. So let's just bring these down and then you can have a minimum length. Bring that up. You can see I'm getting more bad ones here. More red, which is fine. We're just kind of making it a bit stricter. And if we delete the unsolved now and delete the rejected, which are the red ones. You can bring that solve error down a bit. Let's just try and bring it down a little bit more. Delete the rejected again. You know, 0.7, that's probably a nice little sweet spot. Never expect it to be really low anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's that. If I hit the tab key when I'm hovering over the the viewer, just collapse that so I can see this a bit better. I've hit the tab key. I can then go into 3D view, which is really cool. Oops. All these keys, uh, the hot keys kind of work the same as Maya. Oops. So you can see in the table there, in this kind of 3D point cloud it's created. See, like they've picked up little pixel colors and stuff that kind of help visualize the table. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually make this flat on the grid because we're going to want to animate and place a 3D prop on top of there. And we could use it like this, but it makes it much harder to animate with it and stuff. And we have to rotate our 3D object and might fit and look like it's stood up straight on there. But there's a nice easy way we can flatten this and put it on the grid and tell it basically tell Nuke what the floor is so it knows what's flat and what's not. So let's come press tab again. What we'll do is we're gonna shift select a lot of these points that are on the floor. You don't have to get every single one, we just want to get like just get a nice range of them. Just holding down shift again and just selecting some, maybe some at the back as well. So, 
good range points. Careful not to pick any ones that are on the table. It's amazing, really. A few more here. Some up there and here. Okay, that's probably a good amount as we flick through. So then just right click on any one of the yellow ones you've highlighted and then we're going to go ground plane set to selected so that's going to we're going to tell nuke that these points are the floor basically so the ground plane and then zoom that we'll hit the tab key again and see what we've got so now as you can see it's on the floor and obviously we didn't need to select them all, some of them don't really matter, but the main ones are, we know what the tabletop is now. I've done a great job of picking out the tabletop and we're going to be able to put a nice 3D asset on there. So the next thing is to test the track before we take it all to Maya. Um, so that's the last thing we want to do in this kind of stage. So let's go hit the tab key again. At this point we can get rid of the sharpen mode. I'm going to press D on the keyboard just to hide it. So I've got my original footage back. That's fine. And then we're going to come to the camera tracker properties. If they're not showing up, just double click the camera tracker to bring them back up. And then we're going to come down to the bottom here. I'm going to create a scene plus. And this is going to automate some more nodes for us here and create a 3D scene. Let me just talk you a bit about this. I'm just going to hit spacebar, go full screen here. By default the, uh, the viewer still stays in the camera tracker so we just need to disconnect that. Connect it to the scanline renderer. So let me talk you through what we've got here. We've got the read node, obviously the original footage. We've hidden the sharpen node. You can actually delete that if you want, but I'll just leave it there anyway in case. The camera tracker, which has done all our tracking data. It's created the point cloud, which is what we've seen in the 3D view. We've got a camera, which I didn't actually show you there this time. We've now got a camera, so it's just frozen up there. Scene, now we've created the scene plus it's created this camera for us and now look at this this matches exactly the movements that I did so I can imagine me holding my vert this is my iPhone representation now and I just walked around the table very unsteadily actually <laughs> as you can see just done a great job of matching those camera movements We've got a scene node here, right in the middle, which is just kind of what we plug everything into. So we're going to have some 3D geometry in a minute, and we plug that in there. And we've got the scanline renderer because we're using 3D assets and things like that. We've got to be able to kind of render that as well, and then into the viewer, so we, which uh, then shows what we can see. Lens distortion, it's not doing much really because we haven't really set anything on it. It's undistorted but that would be where you'd plug your lens distortion data in. Like I said, we can talk about that in a bit more detail in later classes. So here we go. Let's bring that back up. Let's have some more room. So at this point, we can then add our cube in. So I'm just going to hit the tab key and search for cube. And then we're going to just plug that into the scene node. And zoom out a bit, we've got this giant cube. So let's just use the cube properties just to scale it down a little bit. I'm going to go in the 3D view now to place this in the right place. Because so it looks at kind of in the right place, you can move it around. And we've got the 3D view really. So let's have a look for it. It's underneath the table. 
it's very important we place this bang on top of the table. I find it easiest to use the translate tools here, so the middle mouse button. Click and drag, you can use these tools, uh, these attributes here to move it. Because when I, fi I find when I try and move them in here, often they start scaling it weirdly. So a little tip for you, just use the middle mouse button here. So let's just make sure it's right on top of those tabletop points. Better for it to be slightly going through them than hovering on top. Great. Um, I can visualize this slightly different as well. Just get rid of some of the topology so that's a bit more simple. Wireframe render. Just wanted to show it if it's cute like this. So I can hide the point cloud if I want just to get out of the way so I can see better. And I want the points off the little cube as well, so I'll just close all the properties and then I'm just left with the uh, cube on the table. So let's test it now to see if it's nice and steady and tracked. Now it's looking pretty good. It may look a bit shaky while it previews here. Once this progress bar is finished, we should get a good shot of what we've got. And that's looking really steady, really happy with that. So the idea in the next step, we will ex I'll show you how to export this data. So we're going to export a camera, the cube, and kind of the point cloud data into Maya. So then we can rebuild the CGI table and um, place our 3D asset onto it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.